Imagine you're just hanging out one day when you hear this. You've read about messages from aliens before, and this has all the telltale signs. So how do you figure out what they're trying to say? This audio file is actually a message we sent into outer space in the 70s. It's called the Arecibo message. It was an interstellar radio message sent to the globular star cluster M13, about 25,000 light years away from Earth. It carried basic information about humanity and Earth. In this video, we're going to switch roles and see if we would be able to interpret the Arecibo message if we were the ones who received it. We're going to work through clues together, but pause the video at any time if you want a chance to work them out first by yourself. So what's the first thing you would do? You might think to run it through some kind of frequency visualizing device to see if there are any patterns or clues in the signal. There are two distinct frequencies. This looks a lot like a binary code, a code made entirely out of ones and zeros. What if we assign a zero to the higher frequency and a one to the lower frequency? We end up with this series of ones and zeros. Okay, now what? Well, if all the sci-fi books I've read and the YouTube videos I've watched have taught me anything, it's that if we were to ever communicate with aliens, the most likely language we'd have in common is mathematics. This is because mathematics is the same everywhere in the universe. Here on Earth or a million light years away, one plus one still equals two. So can we find some kind of mathematical pattern in this sequence? Well, the most obvious thing to do is to just count the number of ones and zeros. 1,679, 1,679. I can't see anything particularly special about that number. Can you? Let's play around with it and see if we can find something. Is it a prime number? Prime numbers can only be divided by themselves and one. Well, no, it can be divided by 73 and 23, so it's not prime. Wait. 73 and 23 are prime. This is a semi-prime number, a multiple of two primes. Is that a clue? Maybe it's some kind of image, like a grid or a rectangle. Let's see what happens if we arrange the sequence 73 across and 23 down. If this is an image, I'll make the zeros white pixels and the ones black pixels. Okay, that looks like nothing. Let's try 23 across and 73 down. Whoa, okay, this looks like something. We've got some figures, what looks like a coded message. Now we're getting somewhere. What could it mean? I'll make it colorful, just so it's easier to distinguish the different parts of the message. Look at the first row first. It looks like some kind of code, maybe in vertical columns. We know that the aliens know binary, or they at least understand some idea equivalent to the ones and zeros we use in binary. Maybe the aliens can also count in binary. Let's try and interpret these vertical columns as numbers and see what happens. By the way, when I replaced the black and white image with the colored image, I made the black pixels the zeros and the white or colored pixels the ones, just so it was easier to see. This first column has two white squares, which means one, one or three in binary. This next column has one white square, one black square, and one white square again, one zero one, five. This next column is seven. This one is nine. Hmm, it looks like the odd numbers counting up from three. You know that feeling in math when you're sure you've got the wrong answer, but you can't quite figure out why? I'm getting that feeling. Starting to count up from three just feels weird. One thing I've learned through all my physics and maths exams is that not every piece of information is important. Sometimes we're given numbers we don't need, like question numbers in an exam paper. They're just showing us where the question starts. I can't help but notice that this bottom digit seems to appear in every single vertical column. What if those squares are just markers to show where each column begins? What if we just ignore that row and then start counting in binary again? So this column would be one, then two, then three, then four. Hey, it's the numbers one to 10. That makes more sense. 
Let's move on to the next part of the image. What do you think this represents? If we try binary numbers again, we get 1, 6, 7, 8, and 15. I've heard those numbers before, but where? Could it be? Yes! The atomic numbers of hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and phosphorus. Do you know what these elements are? They're the elements that life is made of. Is that what they're trying to tell us? Are these aliens made of the same stuff as us? This could be a really good clue to some more of the message. These clusters down here look pretty similar. They're all made up of five columns of what look like binary numbers. 75010455500. What do you think they mean? Maybe they're referring to the atomic numbers of elements again, but why would the same atomic number be mentioned twice? And what would zero mean? There isn't an element with an atomic number of zero. No, it can't be that. What if the digits aren't telling us atomic numbers of elements, but instead the number of atoms belonging to each element in some kind of larger compound? If we line these numbers up with the chemical elements, we get seven hydrogen atoms, five carbon atoms, zero nitrogen atoms, one oxygen atom, and zero phosphorus atoms. Whereas the one below it here means zero hydrogen atoms, zero carbon atoms, zero nitrogen atoms, four oxygen atoms and one phosphorus atom. You know what? This next one looks exactly the same as the first cluster. In fact, there seems to be some sort of pattern down these columns on the right and left. The chemical compounds are repeating themselves. So we've got C5H7O, some kind of organic sugar molecule, and PO4, some kind of phosphate molecule, repeating down the sides, and then these four unique molecules in the middle. Does that sound familiar to you? Yes, the compounds that make up DNA, a backbone made of alternating sugar and phosphate molecules and four nucleotide bases, all enclosed within a double helix. And speaking of double helix, that's exactly what this next part of the message looks like, a drawing of the double helix shape of DNA. And the strange figure underneath, do you think that could be a picture of the aliens that sent the message? So these aliens are not only made of the same chemical elements as us, but they look like us. What a small universe. We've now deciphered a number system, chemical elements, and some organic molecules. These aliens seem smart. There are a few clusters surrounding the pictures that we haven't quite figured out yet. They don't look like pictures, so let's assume that they're numbers. Let's start with this one in the middle of the double helix. If we use binary counting to tally up this massive number, we get 4,292,441,882. And what about this grid next to the picture of the aliens that sent the message? If we use binary to tally up this long number, we get 4,292,853,750. Why do you think these aliens would send us such large numbers? What do you think they mean? Maybe the placement of the numbers in the message could give us a clue about their meaning. Our first big number is inside the double helix. Do you know any massive numbers associated with DNA? Do you think this could be the number of letters in the alien genome? A genome is all the genetic information you need to make up an organism. It's like the instruction manual for building and running that organism. I think the aliens are trying to tell us that this massive number is how many letters or nucleotide bases you would need to make one of them. This second large number is placed right next to the picture of the aliens that sent the message. So it's probably telling us something about them. Hmm, 4,292,853,750. Maybe the aliens are telling us how many of them there are. Let's look at the bottom of the message and see if we can recognize any more pictures. This row looks familiar. A big cluster of dots followed by nine smaller dots and lines. It must be the solar system. The large cluster is the sun and then these smaller dots and lines are the planets. 
But why do you think some of the planets are represented by dots and some of them by lines? Why do Jupiter and Saturn have three dots, but Uranus and Neptune only have two? I've got it. It must be to do with the sizes of the planets. Larger planets are represented by more dots. We can also see that the third planet away from the sun is slightly raised compared to all the other planets. These aliens are telling us where they live. And what about this final picture? Interesting, it looks like some kind of concave surface. Hold on a minute, I've seen this before in my physics degree. Let me find my textbook. Here it is. Yes, this looks very similar to light waves reflecting from a mirror, specifically a curved mirror. But why would they be sending a message about light waves reflecting from a mirror? Wait, they're probably explaining how they sent the message to us. They beamed waves out and reflected them off a large curved dish out into space. Okay, we're almost there. There are two parts of the message we haven't deciphered yet. There's this row of pixels underneath the telescope and this column of pixels next to the alien. Just like with everything else we've deciphered so far, their placement is probably important. They don't seem to have a specific shape, so they're probably numbers again. But the way they're positioned makes them look almost like labels. If I had to guess, I would see these numbers as telling us the sizes of the objects next to them. So this one might be the height of one of these aliens. And this one could be the length or diameter of the telescope that sent us the message. Let's calculate the numbers to see if our hypothesis makes sense. This number next to the picture of a human is a 14. Hmm. No matter what unit we use, 14 doesn't really sound correct for the height of a human. Do you have any ideas to help us make sense of that number? Okay, sorry guys, I can't do this next bit. So there's no way you, me, or any alien would be able to decipher these two numbers. The kind of random trick here is to multiply the numbers by the wavelength of the signal itself. So wavelength equals the speed of light over frequency. The speed of light is 300 million meters per second. If we divide that by the frequency of the signal, we get 0.126 meters or 126 millimeters, the wavelength of the signal. Then we would have to multiply our number, 14, by the wavelength of the signal and we would end up with 1.76 meters. That makes much more sense for the average height of a human. Well, actually, it's the average height of an adult male, specifically in the United States, specifically in the 1970s. We would have to use the same method with the number underneath the telescope. If we multiplied that number by the wavelength of the signal, we would get 306.18 meters, the diameter of the Arecibo telescope. Guys, we have just deciphered an entire alien message. Now I've got to admit, in reality, if I were faced with interpreting this message alone, I probably would not be able to figure out what a lot of it meant. There's a popular myth that after Frank Drake, the designer of the Arecibo message, had finished designing it, he showed the decoded grid of ones and zeros to a number of scientists from different fields. None of the experts could decipher the entire message, yet each expert recognized the part relevant to their discipline. Carl Sagan, for example, deciphered the bits about planetary science, but couldn't get the parts about DNA chemistry. Decoding a message like this requires more than just being an expert in a field. It requires the ability to learn effectively and make sense of the information that's presented. It can be a very daunting feeling to be faced with a lot of information, especially about seemingly disconnected things. Self-doubt creeps in. Where do I even start? Will I be able to understand any of this? How am I going to remember all of this? I know I can get overwhelmed when I start researching for a new video. It's something we all deal with and it can be difficult to navigate. But fortunately, I do know something that can help. I recently found this 13 part video series on Skillshare called The Science of Effective Learning, taught by medical doctor and teacher Santiago Acosta. He walks you through the best scientifically proven ways to learn, common myths and misconceptions about learning, and even reveals how a regular Joe became a memory champion in just one year. He gives you practical and useful tools to help you achieve your learning goals and reveals counterintuitive things like why making mistakes actually helps you learn faster. 
Something valuable I personally got out of this course was improving my recall. I always thought I had terrible recall. Not terrible memory, but it was like I just couldn't recall those memories. For example, if someone asked me what movie did you watch last week, I wouldn't be able to recall the movie. But if someone said, oh, it was Fast and the Furious, I'd be like, oh yeah, it was Fast and the Furious. The memory was there, I just couldn't recall it. This course showed me techniques on how to improve my recall and that it can get better with practice. And after implementing these techniques, I have noticed a significant improvement in my recall ability. It was really encouraging to overcome what I thought was a hard limitation about myself. Thanks to our sponsor Skillshare, you can watch the whole course completely free. I would personally join for this course alone, but you'll get access to thousands of other courses as well. Experts from pretty much every discipline have gathered there to share their knowledge and experience. It's a place to get inspired, learn new skills, and put them to work in impactful ways. There are classes on how to use AI to help you with your creative work, animation, productivity, photography, film and video, entrepreneurship, and many more. The first 500 people to use my link will get access to one of Skillshare's best offers, 30 days free and 40% off your first year of Skillshare membership. Join up with the link in the description. I hope this class helps you as much as it helped me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.